I will now call to order the Monday, December 12, 2011, informational meeting of the Sioux Falls City Council. Welcome to all of you here at Carnegie Town Hall. And those of you at home or at work on cha watching Channel 16 or on SiouxFalls.org. We'll begin today's meeting with a staff report from Sue Roust, Interim City Clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, not too much to report today. Uh, s staff has been uh, spending a little bit of time in the last week rever reviewing the proposal for Tuesday meetings that's going to be coming to you, looking uh, very closely at the timeline and seeing what we could do to make sure that worked. The next time critical task that we're going to be working on is preparing the information for the April 2012 election. The uh, circulating petitions doesn't begin until uh, January 27th of 2012, but that's going to be here before we know it. And so we are, we're going to be looking at that. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled tomorrow to go over the materials that we'll be giving to candidates and putting on our website. Um, I will be gone this Friday, and that's when the uh, Charter Revision Commission meets. But the, one of the proposals that is being uh, presented by a citizen is a proposal on instant runoff voting. And so I have done a little bit of background uh, research on that proposal so I could kind of anticipate questions that the commission might ask this Friday and, and provide the answers for those. Um, we So we will be talking a little bit later about legislative priorities and then during public service on, on the Tuesday meeting proposal. And um, that's what we've been working on lately. Any questions for Sue? If not, thank you, Sue. Um, I would now um, call on Councillor Brown for a report on last Monday, December 5th, Fiscal Committee meeting. Really no report. It's sort of a to-be-continued stance on both issues we discussed. Fairgrounds funding, still researching, uh, determining how much the city uses the fairgrounds and how much uh, we do out there for the fairgrounds. And then also we uh, briefly touched on the fraud ordinance. Um, city Attorney's Office is still researching that and will bring back something to us probably at the next meeting. Any questions for Councillor Brown? Thank you. We'll now go to City Council open discussion and we will begin this afternoon by calling on Terry Torkelson from SMG, our manager of the Sioux Falls Arena. This is a uh, request that was made by council that he come forward. And uh, Councillor Jamison, I think it was your request. Did you have? Brown. Oh, Councillor Brown, sorry. Um, would you like to repeat what your question was last week and then we'll have? Sure. Terry, thank you for being here. We appreciate you coming. No problem. Um, there were some just very basic questions that I couldn't answer from constituents in terms mm -hmm. of where this contract ranked in terms of the arenas, total business, the size of the contract, how many dates it involved, and wondering if you could give us kind of an overview to kick it sure. off. Sure. Um, their season runs generally 24 dates. Sometimes you do have uh, they make the playoffs. They did not last year. Um, we did a, some financial uh, analysis of the last few seasons. Um, in the 2009-2010 season, um, we averaged revenue of about $700 per game. That does not include utilities or financial overhead. Um, those numbers do go up in the 2010-11 season, and part of that was due to SMG's contract changed. We're now giving 42.6% of the food and beverage, and we did raise some rates on food and beverage. So that's where that increase came in. Um, so as far as overall revenues, it's, it's not necessarily up there with a lot of events we do. Um, they've been here the longest, for one, is why they have the deal they have. Um, they have made some capital investments in the building. Uh, if you remember back in the 70s, the scoreboards with the message center on it, that was something that they put in and installed. Um, so they've been a good partner over the years, but it's, I can do one concert and make more than on that one concert than I do an entire season of Skyforce. 
So what is the last year the total revenue? Um, let's see, total revenue. Was a uh, hundred and forty-two thousand. Oh, wait, those are expenses. Sorry, <laughs> one hundred and eighty thousand. Expenses were one hundred forty-two thousand. Yep, but that does not include utilities or full-time staff. Revenue of one hundred eighty thousand. Correct. So it was about a thirty-eight thousand dollar profit for the season. Explain the concessions again. That the 1011 contract is 42 percent of food and beverage. What was it previously? Uh, 36.8. Plus, we raised uh, some pricing in between there. And as I understand it, the Skyforce has uh, all the signage and gets they have the some. There's a percentage split, and it's the the boards, the signs that are on the scoreboards that they install. They uh, receive approximately 50 percent of that, and then with different the teams, we have different deals. Some of them can sell signage in certain places, and uh, some of that revenue goes to them, some goes to us. But with them gone, we would have the right to all of the revenue. So. And then game plan for replacing uh, those dates? Um, we have some, obviously, some groups that are in the convention center that would like to expand over. Uh, there's a few of those. Uh, we have what other kinds groups of that are groups um, like Home Show uh, is one. Um, I know the Dairy Expo does. Uh, you know, some of the ones we talked about expanding into the event center uh, can also expand into the existing arena. We uh, uh, believe it or not, Roller Dolls is a highly profitable event. Um, they're very, very interested. Part of their problem that they've had over the years is they haven't had a home. So once they get a home, I think that. Uh, It'd be even stronger. Some of our other buildings, like Lincoln, that does roller derby, does very well with it. So I mean, right there, we could probably do six or eight dates. What makes that more profitable? Just the deal. Pardon? The deal. You know, they're they're a flat rent uh, rate, and the contract, since it's not a long-term contract like we have with the other sports teams, um, it's not as good a deal. Any other questions for Terry? Councillor Jamison. Hey, Terry, thanks for coming. Sure. Uh, I think it was last week we talked a little bit about <clears throat> the idea, the possibility of changing the renewal date of the contract for the Arena Convention Center and the new event center to allow the city to negotiate a lease with possible other tenants like the Stampede and the Storm. Mm -hmm. How would that affect you if we change the date of that renewal? I guess I don't quite understand what you're asking. Well, I assumed, maybe and that's the first problem is to assume something, but that right now the Stampede and the Storm are trying to make a deal on the new event center, or we should be wanting them to make a new deal on the event center and, and mm -hmm. lease that building. Mm -hmm. Who should they be talking to? Um, at this point, you know, it, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not common to be really making deals with people prior to the bonds being issued and things like that. You know, our building in Lincoln, uh, which we just opened, granted it has an NCAA <coughs> Division I team in it, so there were partnerships there. Um, it's a year ahead of us. They're not in any hurry to book a lot of stuff. Um, obviously, they need to come to the, you know, they need to be part of it, but um, I think depending upon when the new management company or when uh, the city decides which management company is going to run the facility would be a good time to do that. Um, I know the teams just need to be reassured that the city is interested in having them move because they are an, an integral part of making that building successful. Okay, so tell me exactly when do you think we should start worrying about who's going to be leasing our building? when SMG starts running it. <laughs> no, right. I think right now the big thing is marketing. It's not so much booking 
the event center because a lot of things are going to change during design development. Um, you're going to have, uh, you know, you have a contract manager at risk, so there's going to be things that are going to change in cost. Um, you're going to have a lot of changes, so you, you need to be careful, especially with conventions or concerts, circuses, booking, things like that can be a very dangerous thing prior to starting to put a shovel in the earth because there have been organizations that have been burned and you don't come back from that reputation if you don't fulfill um, what you promised when you booked the building. Hmm. Okay. Other questions for Terry? Councilor Brown. So are the other teams more profitable than what the Skyforce is? Yes. Because my, by my math, it's $1,500 a game? Yes. How much more? I don't. I just did the breakdown for the Skyforce. I knew that question was coming. Um, you know, the rent structures are different. Um, the contracts are different. The amount of signage rights they have, pardon my cold, are different. So I can get you that data if you'd like. I would appreciate that. Thank okay. you. Okay. No problem. Do you want me to send it to everyone? Yes, please. Councillor Antiman. Just one question, Terry. So the bottom line is every time you negotiate a deal, whether it's a show, whether it's a sport team, it's negotiation. Mm -hmm. You start at a point and every team, in most cases, everything is going to be a little bit different. It's what all you can do to negotiate in order to make it work for both of you. Is correct. that correct? The, uh, the Skyforce contract currently is with the management company. The Stampede contract's with the city. So. You know, and whenever we negotiate a long-term contract like that, we work with the current administration. So the administration at the time the Skyforce deal was the last deal was signed, they had input on that. And there was actually an addendum to our contract based on those negotiations. So it, uh, we don't do that without city input. So the best thing that we could do as a city is to think about the management group that we're going to have. And as you suggested, uh, uh, identify a management group as soon as possible so that they can do their job. And that's to make, get, cut the best deals that they possibly can as far as bookings for the city as we go forward. Yeah, and, and any time you have a, a long-term tenant like that, you definitely need to have the city at the table. I mean, the city needs to be part of those because it comes down to part of it's being a quality of life issue. It's not just a matter of dollars and cents. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Terry? Terry, did you have anything else that you wanted to bring forward? I don't believe so. If anyone has questions, feel free to contact me. I'm available anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other city council open discussion? Um, we'll go into legislative priorities if there's nothing else that any of you have to bring forward. And um, at your seats, you each have a copy of a draft resolution. Sue, do you want to lead the discussion on this? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Councilor Erpenbach had circulated um, a chart to all council members on which uh, you were accumulating your uh, legislative priorities of each of the council members. And the resolution you have before you has uh, includes wording that covers the top six priorities that were voted on on that list. And it uh, would include wording about, uh, first of all, a statement having to do with supporting local control uh, for municipalities, and then uh, one about expanding the base for the 911 surcharge as well as uh, supporting legislation to increase the surcharge. Uh, there's an item on here about supporting legislation to give municipalities the authority to revoke liquor licenses for establishments with underage sales violations. And one to uh, support exempting municipal projects, facilities, and equipment from sales and use taxes and uh, one to support the voting center concept. And this um, has tentatively been placed on your meeting agenda for next week, uh, December 19th, so that it can be approved prior to your meeting with legislators at the Breakfast Club on, on December 21st. Uh, but it's still on a, still could have adjustments um, should, should you wish them. Questions or comments? Councillor Erpenbach. 
Well, now I have seen, um, in addition to this, the list that we have on our resolution, I have seen the um, primary focus for the South Dakota Municipal League. We're, the uh, board meets on Wednesday this week in Pier, and they are going. They're looking at a draft that covers. Um, Chapter 9-43 of state statute, it's basically about special assessments and financing of improvements, and it's a 52-page document, so I didn't print it out, but it is available at, at the South Dakota Municipal League website if you're interested in that. That item is not on our resolutions, um, our list of resolutions, and it wasn't one that really rose to the surface for us. But just, I say this and kind of as a preface to the idea that some of the things that are on our resolution are things that the group, the Municipal League, is going to work on together. But some of them are items that are really kind of our own, things that, that we're pretty passionate about. And so my question is, you know, going forward, how do we want to handle this in terms of we, we don't have legislation written and we don't have a sponsor, we don't have anything to support us in terms of especially item um, three on our resolution, the um, uh, legislation giving munip municipalities the authority to revoke liquor licenses for underage, underage sales. You know, we don't have any sort of group effort put together for that, and the legislature starts in, you know, a month. And so my question then is, as a group, do we want to just know that this is, you know, put it in our resolution for this year, know that it's hot for us, and then work toward getting it into the Municipal League policy plan next year, which would mean going to some meetings in August and advocating for our position with other communities. That's the point of Municipal League is that we work together on things. Or do we just want to throw it out there and say, hey, this is what we believe and not do anything about it? That's my real question. Councilor Antiman. I think you did a great job here. Thank you for helping to put all this information together. You know, there are a lot of things that we do have in common with other uh, groups throughout uh, the state, other, other cities of various sizes. However, I think you're correct. These are some of the things that came to us that we feel are important. Uh, Councilor Jamison bringing forward uh, uh, the underage violations and, and the issues that we continue to have year after year uh, with this, I think, warrants us looking at this and what can we do and maybe uh, uh, City Attorney Fifley can help. Um, he's been tuned into a lot of this. But if we think this is important enough, we really, and, and if this is what our agenda is going to be, then I think that we just need to carry some of these things forward. I think we all realize that just like this council doesn't vote 100% all the time on every issue that's out there, that every community out there is going to have issues that are specific to them and more important to them. Uh, I, I agree. I think the list that we have here is very good. Uh, and I would encourage our leadership to talk with uh, the city attorney uh, if we need to move these things forward. And if we would like to do that, let's look at a way of trying to put it out there in the forefront. Councilor Jamison. Go ahead, Councilor Erpenbach. I, I was just going to say that I think there's some real value. I mean, these are all items that I voted for as well. I, these have solid support from most of us on the council. What I would think is that we do present this to our legislators and have them know this year this is hot for us and you're going to be hearing about it. We're going to work through Municipal League because we do need that sort of group support. It's difficult to get anything to happen in the legislature for just Sioux Falls and so we need that team effort. But I think it needs to be on our list for this year and that we need to start being in the faces of legislators and knowing that this is important to us and then the legislation starts going forward next year perhaps. That's what was on my mind based on what Councilor Antiman was saying. Councilor Jamison. I would just add that uh, I think the list that we've got together is a great list. <clears throat> I support it. And if it's, if it's okay with the rest of the group, I would work with my legislators in my district to get somebody to sponsor this uh, item number three and then just see how far we can take it. And I could keep you posted. Which then Council brings up another point. Uh, one of the things that Councilor Brown and I talked about, and Councilor Aguilar as well, um, is that if the, this, is, this is our statement, then we need to be able to talk about it on a level that, where we're all using sort of the same words or pre staying on message, to use a marketing term. You know, we need to have some sort of talking points, and if you're going to work with someone on this, it, that, that legislator or team of legislators needs to understand that this is a group effort from sure. us, that we're really behind this and that we can, we can be available to speak to committees or whatever needs to happen. 
but we need to work together to make this to make this really function the way that it that it, that it would be successful I believe we did have some volunteers to put that some of those statements together Councillor Brown and Councillor Erpenbach I yeah, thought that yeah. yeah and then then I was kind of ad hoc appointing or volunteering Tracy Turbeck and, and, uh, <laughs> and Yvonne um, from the Municipal League because of their experience with that process. And so I figured we'd shoot things back and forth by email and see if we can't come up with some talking points that we can all kind of have in our back pocket for those things. Well, the first thing we need to do is to have this placed on the agenda then for the December 19th meeting, the resolution. And if it passes, uh, we'll be looking for your continued leadership then to call that group together. Okay. Are there changes or questions or anything that people have for this? Councillor Anderson, Jr. I just have a question on the first point. Uh, that's something that has been coolly recepted the last couple of years in Pierre. Where is this at in the league's priority list now? Well, as, as I said, um, it's my understanding that the main push from the league is going to be about special assessments this year, but it is one that has been on the league's list of policies for many years, and it continues to be sort of a guiding light, whether it's, you know, it's not necessarily specific legislation, but that idea of local control, allowing cities, allowing citizens to make choices about how they are governed is a huge, huge idea behind what South Dakota Municipal League is about and, and what the city of Sioux Falls, we've been very active in terms of, you know, local control. That's why we're at Home Rule Charter. So, um, yeah, I realize that specific legislation hasn't necessarily been too well received in the legislature lately, but it's something that I think we kind of see, and it came through in the emails that I got as I was tabulating these, that this council is very much supportive of keeping that idea of local control in the forefront. Councillor Brown. It really speaks to what uh, the, the Municipal League calls core beliefs. Um, it, it's a broad overview statement and not specific to any piece of legislation but that's why the league is there to always protect city governments and uh, right for local control on all issues and I think that's what this speaks to councillor Rolfing uh, councillor Jameson I'm wondering if um, your um, point here on the underage uh, uh, sales violation shouldn't be expanded a little bit more too with the revelations that we've had uh, in the last week or so up in Huron and uh, if that's not that's the only reason that is there if that shouldn't be expanded a little bit Councilor Jamison <clears throat> well I think certainly we can expand it I think one of our initial goals would be to get some legislation written and the actual verbiage and maybe even some further information from our state legislators on uh, the parameters that we can actually affect it. Right. And we'll come back and keep everybody in the same loop. Good. But, yeah, very good. Any other comments? Thank you to Councillor Erpenbach and to Interim City Clerk Roust for their work on this. I think it's a good list, and I look forward to the vote next week. Any other City Council open discussion? If not, we'll go on to our presentations for this afternoon. Uh, for those of you that have seen the agenda, we are deferring item A, the review of the transit customer service audit to our informational meeting on December 19th. And so today we'll begin with an event center update by our mayor, Mike Huther. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you, Council Aguilar. Really appreciate it. And uh, Council, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, this is our first presentation about the event center since the vote. Uh, and it certainly will not be our last. And I, I want to thank you for that. I want to let the public know that the Council and the, the Mayor's office has been working in tandem to try to figure out how, how often should we communicate with the Council and the public on this this venture in terms of constructing a new event center for our town uh, what we what we are planning on doing right now is providing a monthly update and uh, we'll continue with that effort unless you know things were to change and unless the council wants to do something different but this is our first and it is December 12th 
and really looking forward to the dialogue and, and the discussion today. Um, wanted to uh, wanted to start by it, it's so easy just to move right into the to the next step, uh, and that is constructing the event center without just taking a moment to reflect on what the city, what the people of Sioux Falls were able to accomplish uh, with the event center vote that happened on November 8th. Uh, and my gosh, folks, it was quite the accomplishment for, for this great town. Uh, there was a vote, and uh, there were 58% of the people that voted that day decided to vote yes to construct a $115 million event center for our new town, uh, or for our town. Um, there were 42% who indeed voted no. When you break this down even further, and you break it down by precinct, 72% of the precincts in our city uh, wanted to construct a, a new event center. 28% uh, voted, voted no. Again, I don't want to disregard the people that voted no. That's not the intent of this, of this information, but I think it, it does show that there was very, very, very strong support to move this city forward in terms of building a new event center for our town. One of the things that I think is just unbelievable when it came to the vote is that this was the largest number of people who have ever voted for anything in the city of Sioux Falls. We had over 40,000 people that voted uh, in, in our city. That's a 25% increase over the last largest uh, election uh, uh, turnout that, that we ever had, and that was during the runoff back on uh, April 27th of 2010 for, for mayor. I think it shows a little bit about uh, the spirit of our city. And again, this wasn't just the largest number to vote in a special election. This was the largest number to vote in any election in Sioux Falls. A 41.2% voter turnout. And yes, now with uh, some of the, uh, uh, the ease in terms of the absentee balloting, we almost had twice as many absentee ballots as we've ever had in, in our city, and that's 5,488 uh, absentee ballots. I'm proud of Sioux Falls. Uh, I definitely am. But I'll also let you know the state as a whole is also very excited. And there's a level of pride uh, that's, that's uh, certainly resonating in a big, big way. I want to show you kind of our, our, our slate, uh, our, our canvas in terms of where we're going to be working uh, over the next uh, 30 or so months. Uh, this is it, Sioux Falls. Uh, you can see the south side of the convention center. And this will be our canvas where we'll begin to, to, to do the work in terms of constructing our, our new event center. Uh, we're extending our campus. We're extending our event center campus. And we'll continue to provide you visual updates as well as narrative uh, updates uh, as, as we proceed. To start off with, we wanted to prov provide you kind of a project management 101. Again, this is going to be a long process. And it's even going to be longer than what we've just gone through over the last uh, year when we talked about the event center vote. Uh, so I wanted to start on a little bit of Project Management 101. What is entailed? Well, we're going to define and structure the event center work. We're going to identify the project team members, their roles, and yes, the work that is allocated to each. We are going to develop processes for risk, opportunity, and I know that as many of you are concerned with financial management. And we need to communicate. When it comes to project management, one of the key aspects is communication. You communicate, you hold people accountable, you stay on task, and then guess what? You communicate some more. I wanted to help uh, you understand some of the key players that are gonna, that are gonna be coming forward to the, to you, the council as well as to the city uh, or as we build this. There are some familiar names. Uh, in terms of the project manager, it's Kendra Simmonsma. Uh, design construction is Mark Cotter. Budget and financing, Tracy Turbeck. Planning and zoning, Mr. Mike Cooper. In our community development area is Darren Smith. And then on our legal team is David Fifley. We'll go through each of these in, in a bit more detail, but these are familiar names to all of you, and they're certainly going to become even more familiar to the people of Sioux Falls. 
Let's start with the first, and that is design and construction. Uh, again, the intent here is to try to familiarize you with the names. So, council, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have specifics that you want to get into, or to the people of Sioux Falls, if there are specific questions or comments that you have, I wanted to introduce you to the names that you can go to to help get some of those questions answered. Um, as well as you're going to see some names that are not city employees. That is done very, very purposely. You want to hire experts to help walk you or lead you through this process. In this particular design and construction phase, you're going to see a lot of pros, a lot of experts, such as Dick Strasberg of Tegra. He, alongside with Kendra Simmonsma, will be managing this project as we build it. You're going to see some other names like uh, Cook Hazard Ar uh, Architects, uh, as well as St. Combs Detlifts and Cook Hazard in terms of the architect and design team. Mortensen Construction, that's the construction manager at risk that we've, uh, we've hired and many others. You're also going to see on this particular slide uh, other committees. I'll talk to you more about that, but part of those committee structure will be having public input involved in part of, uh, in part of the, uh, that, that work. Let's talk about design and construction just a little bit. There are going to be uh, contracts that will be initiated as we work through this and we'll continue to educate you on much as we possibly can on, on these contracts, such as St. Combs Detlifts uh, and, and Cook Hazard in terms of the architectural work, Mortensen Construction. Uh, we are hiring legal firms such as Jim Wiedrich, who you've met before in terms of providing those legal services, Dick Strasberg of Tegra that I've already talked about. He is our owner's rep. He doesn't work for Mortensen. He doesn't work for St. Combs. He works for the city, uh, and, and that's an important factor as, as we move forward. Amer American Engineering Testing, I'll talk more about that. Stockwell Engineers, and there's going to be many others along the way. Some other steps that have already occurred is that we have submitted an event center plan to our planning commission. That was done on December 7th, and we'll also provide even more information with the project kickoff uh, to kind of give you an indication of the initial work schedule. That will be done in late December. And then, as we talked about, we, are, we will be soliciting citizen input to get more and more involved in the design details as well as working on specific facility committees and uh, tenant committees. One of the uh, things that I found intriguing, Mark Cotter told me this, and, and I thought you'd find it intriguing as well. He said, the biggest unknown in construction is what lies below. And so because of that, we're going to be doing over 100 soil borings across uh, that, that, that area out there by the event center complex. What will that include? The event center area, McCart Fields, the school district site, and if you look towards the north uh, across Russell and then on the other side of Russell, you're going to see that that is where we're going to be doing some of that off-site sewage work that, that, that we talked about. Uh, it's going to be a major complex, and we have to improve uh, the capabilities for our sanitary sewer lines out there as well. Um, we'll evaluate the composition of the soil. That will help us identify where the rock or the quartz site is, and, and that's important. Rock is good sometimes, and it's bad other times. If you're going to build something on top of it, rock is a good thing. So where we build the, uh, the, the event center, for example, if we find rock early on, that's, that's, that's a good thing. However, if you're going to uh, replace your sanitary sewer lines across Russell, for example, then rock is, is, qual is not as, as good a thing. So we're, we're going to find that, uh, we'll find that out because it will directly influence our foundation design. And, and other things. Let's talk about the money. Uh, and I know that interests all of you. Again, familiar name, Tracy Turbeck, but we're also hiring entities to help us with this aspect as well. Uh, Public Financial Management Inc. Incorporated, Perkins Cooey, Davenport Evans, and others will help us through this process. The bond sale. Uh, it's $115 million uh, and, and a bit more. 
uh, that, that we're going to be working on here uh, so that we can do this bond sale in the month of, of January. What's going on? Well, right now we're finalizing the preliminary official statement. Uh, it's, it's known as POS uh, when, when you're in the bonding community. It's kind of like a prospectus uh, if, you're, if you're buying mutual funds or, or, or things like that. Uh, we're also analyzing private activity that's occurring in regards to uh, tax-exempt bonds right now. Uh, we're structuring the bond issue. And we're, we're also determining the bond ratings that we'll utilize for this particular bond offering. Um, we're, we're using two bond, bonding rating firms, Moody's and Standard & Poor's. What that does is that it strengthens our ability to, to uh, leverage the strength of our, of our town, the financial strength of our town, ev even more as well as it will broaden the potential pool of investors that want to get their hands on these bonds. Uh, and and the, again, the greater the demand, the better that is for the city of Sioux Falls and certainly uh, the taxpayer. They'll not only rate the event center bonds, but they'll provide or reaffirm uh, uh, the rating that we have today with, with our bonds. And again, we're planning on a January uh, a bond sale. Uh, the cash flow projections are, are, are important. Uh, again, we're going to be getting cash in, but just as important is how do we get that, uh, that, that cash out? How fast is the cash out? Because we are going to be earning interest off of these bonds, and the more interest that we earn, uh, the more uh, prudent that we are in terms of the cash going out. We can use that to also pay for some of the other expenses with this project, such as paying down that debt. And, and I, if there's one thing that I know about this council, it's this. You'll want us to track the project costs. And uh, we will do that and, and more with the support of, of Tracy's team. Let's go to planning and zoning. Again, Mike Cooper uh, is working to really focus on, on, on something that, that's important. I think that's where Councilor Jamison was going. And, and I'm going to try to provide a little bit more insight on this uh, with the presentation. because. Developing that management agreement uh, is, is absolutely vital as, as we move forward, and we'll talk about that more. Um, so let's go into some of the detail. On November 25th, what we did is we did submit uh, an RFP to try to find uh, a consultant to help walk us through this management agreement as well as the management contract that we will utilize to manage the event center complex. Uh, that's important. We're hiring a firm first to help us identify the firm that will eventually manage the complex, as well as put together the contract that the event center management firm, let's say it's SMG or global, will ultimately have to live up to. Um, those proposals will be due by, by December 15th. Um, Councilor Jamison, I, I, I think that maybe I could touch on now on some of those, those comments. One of the things that uh, we want to try to do is to find or identify that firm who's going to manage this complex as early as we can. Uh, we've been given that advice from other uh, event center across the, the Midwest and across this country. They, they feel it's very, very important. Our goal is to do that by April or May. Uh, of this year. Um, and in, in the meantime, uh, what you're going to see here is that we have established an interim process before we select that firm. And again, I, I, will, I will also let you know, the two strongest uh, um, firms in terms of doing this in, the, in America today are the two firms that we're working with today. It is SMG and it is Global Spectrum. Uh, and I know that these two firms will be aggressively uh, pursuing uh, their goal, is, and that is to manage this complex uh, as well. But what do we do in the meantime? Well, in the meantime, we do want to evaluate those potential opportunities that are out there. However, uh, Councilor Jameson, this is interesting. The thing that we've been uh, told is do not get too aggressive in booking uh, your, your events right now uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, that was just expressed, but, but more importantly is that they said give yourself some patience. Uh, be very, very careful. Be very, very careful. 
The only things that you should book in the new event center right now are those absolutely can't miss items. That's it. Uh, for example, that Pheasants Forever uh, convention that, that uh, we're, we're trying to book right now for 2015. Uh, some of those big, big things. Let's say we have uh, uh, the president uh, or, or some, something like that is, is going to come to, to Sioux Falls, uh, whoever he or she may be. Uh, those type of things are can't miss items that, that you would book. However, we've been told in, in no uncertain terms, maintain your flexibility as long as you possibly can. So our rush to uh, cut a new deal with the storm or cut a new deal with the stampede uh, it is not as great as, as, you, as, you may, as you may believe. Next. Also, when it comes to planning and zoning, we are updating the plan development zoning district, district standards for the event center site. Um, uh, we are looking at master planning opportunities for economic development uh, adjacent to the event center site and also along Russell's Free Corridor. But, but I also want to make sure that you understand something. It's not just that, uh, that particular location. This goes beyond that. It goes to the Sanford Sports Complex, where the Pentagon will be. It goes towards the, uh, towards the airport. Uh, it goes back towards McCart Fields, and yes, where like the Ramcota is. This is going to be such a powerful, powerful uh, complex for, for our city. And uh, that's what Mike and, and his team will, will be working on, along with the help of, uh, of Darren Smith and Community Development. And I know that this is something that we've talked about before, and, and we're, we're continuing to work and test it, and that is that shuttle, ser shuttle service partnership with uh, downtown Sioux Falls and the, the CVB. Let's go to community development. One of the, uh, the key cogs in terms of funding the event center and those operational expenses that, that are going to occur after we build it included those naming rights and those sponsorship opportunities. Well, behind the scenes, there's a lot of work that's already underway. Uh, and Darren Smith and Erica Beck are, are working on that uh, uh, now, as well as some other things. They are soliciting and identifying private donors for the naming rights on the outside of the building, premium sponsorships, suite and loge boxes. Uh, and, and I will let you know there's demand for all of them. There is. I know that there was a concern that some folks even had within this body that there would be demand, but there is. Uh, and, and right now we're trying to evaluate how do we, how do we uh, work through that, that, that demand on, on all of them. And uh, we'll provide you more and more updates uh, in, in the months to come. Uh, we're also collaborating again with planning and zoning on the event center site master plan uh, because there are certainly commercial development opportunities now and economic development opportunities now that are even greater now that we've got a $115 million brand new event center that's going to be built by the fall of 2014. And yes, I will also let you know that there's demand for that as well. Uh, and we're excited to tell you more and more about that in the months to come. Legal. They do play a role. Uh, and in fact, what we're finding is that legal is playing a role in just about every step along the way. And it's important that they do. Uh, we're working hand-in-hand -hand with Dave Fifley and, and Karen Leonard, as well as outside legal teams to help walk us through this, this project. And we'll talk more and more about that. Contracts. Uh, we're going to try to update all of you as much as we can uh, on the contracts that, that we're working through. I'm not going to go through these in great detail, but again, Stockwell Engineering when it comes to the surveying. I already ta told you about Tegra, told you about uh, Stockwell and, and uh, the, the borings that, that we're doing. Talked about some of the, uh, the other contracts that, that you're already familiar with, whether it be Sink Homes Detlefs, Mortensen Construction, PFM, Davenport Evans, Perkins Coie, Woods Fuller, American Engineering, and so much more. Uh, there's a lot of legal work that's going on, and uh, we'll do our best to try to keep you updated on all of that uh, in, in the months to come. 
we already talked about this uh, before, but, but it's, it is absolutely critical. Uh, we believe sincerely that uh, one of the primary reasons that the event center vote passed in such a dramatic fashion, and one of the primary reasons why we had the highest voter turnout in this city's history, is that we engaged the public at a level that uh, has never been done before. Well, guess, who, what, guess what, Sioux Falls? We're not done. We're not done at all. And in fact, we are right now planning on 33 more of these event center pre uh, presentations until this, this new event center is built. So after this is done, that'll be one down, 32 to go. But it won't just be these forums. It'll be this and much, much more, whether it be open houses, question and answer sessions, and focus groups. You'll continue to learn more about this project. As well as, I would encourage all of you to go to www.siouxfalls.org. There's already a bevy of information that's already been provided, but that will be the marketplace where you'll be able to find out even more about this project uh, and, as we proceed. Uh, in fact, we talked about citizen involvement. Well, you can go to, to that website right now, and you will see a place where you can go to sign up for these citizen committees uh, to get involved in the, in the design uh, process of, of your new event center. We are going to have cameras on the outside of the facility as it's being built, so you'll be able to go there at any time that you want to see what's going on, what kind of action has taken place. And then once we get that shell built, we'll also put cameras on the inside so that you can always see what's going on in your brand spanking new event center. Um, we want the people of Sioux Falls as excited about this as all, as, as all of you are, and as I certainly am, and uh, we believe that this is just one way to help make that, to make that happen. And uh, I am going to make uh, uh, certainly a plea to the council, and, and I don't have to plea too much. Uh, we need the council to have their eyes and their ears and their work boots ready to go as well, and, uh, and, we, and we know all of you will. And then um, I am going to ask one more thing, and that is uh, the media. I need the media's help. Uh, they did such a tremendous job uh, educating the public on the event center topic uh, before we voted, and I'm going to need their help and more to continue this dialogue with, this, with the people and with the state and with this area to let them know how this is going on. I know that it seems at times that the event center gets all of the, uh, uh, the, the attention. But I, I want to let the council know, as well as the people uh, of Sioux Falls know, that there's so much more going on within your city. Uh, there's nine other major projects and so many other smaller projects that are going on. Uh, you're going to be hearing more about these on January 3rd at 4 p.m. You'll be hearing more, but in the meantime, we're doing a community health transformation, downtown development and East Bank redevelopment, financial management, land management, we're uh, analyzing the pension plan, the railroad relocation project, River Greenway, an online plan review and workflow, and yes, we're building a brand new Westside Branch Library. And again, uh, I want to make something very, very clear. That is not done in, in order of priority. You can see it's done in alphabetical order. I need you to stay engaged, and I know that you all will. At the same time, I'm going to ask for uh, your help. I know that you're all chomping at the bit to hear more and to get into the nitty-gritty detail on every single one of these uh, the aspects as, as we build this, this project. But I will tell you, the, uh, the event center project plan is extreme. There is such a high level of detail you can't imagine it. Our goal will be to try to educate you on every one of those aspects in the months to come, but I would encourage you to stay patient. Stay informed, and yes, Sioux Falls, there are great, great things to come. Uh, right now, we're planning our next event center presentation to be on January 9th at 4 p.m., but at this time, I wanted to open up for, it for any questions that the council may have. Questions for Mayor Huther. Councilor Antiman. Thank you for the update, Mayor. Uh, just one point here. You mentioned in the planning and zoning portion on, on, on uh, my page three here, you did establish an interim booking yes. process, and that does, co that does consist of the CVB, uh, Terry Ellis Schmidt, uh, the Sports Authority, uh, 
Mike Sullivan. Mike Sullivan. And, and Mike Cooper. And Mike Cooper. Great. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Antman. Those three bodies, those three people right now are meeting on a regular basis to, to discuss uh, the, these opportunities. Uh, again, you've got, uh, and, and we believe that, that they'll, they'll do a good job uh, ensuring that we don't book something that uh, is going to create havoc later on, uh, and, and they'll certainly keep us uh, updated. Uh, to, this, to this point, I, I don't know of anything that has been booked in, in the new event center. And we'll certainly let you know when those big events come. Thank you, Councilor Adam. Councilor Rolfing. And I thank you, too, for bringing us up to date. That's great. Uh, it's good news to hear that uh, people are, are excited. The business community is excited about uh, becoming part of this uh, new event center. I have one question about that. Uh, on the community development side here, it said that um, you indicated that Darren Smith is uh, out talking to people about um, the naming rights and yes. all that kind of thing. Are we handling that in-house, or are we going to have somebody hired? Councilor Rolfing, that is an excellent question. And right now, we're still trying to figure that out. Uh, and, and I'll try to explain that uh, as best I can. Um, <laughs> the demand is there. Uh, and so one of the things that we're trying to evaluate is whether it makes sense to hire an external third party who won't do it for free uh, if we can negotiate uh, or evaluate these opportunities on our own. Uh, so I don't have the perfect answer for you yet today, Council Rolfing, but uh, we are certainly uh, uh, evaluating it. For example, on, on the naming rights, on the outside of the building, uh, there are firms who, are in, who want their name on the outside of the new Sioux Falls Event Center. And uh, so we're trying to, to evaluate how, how to best uh, to deal with that, because uh, it's a great problem to have. As well as, we've got firms and entities in town that want those suites. Not only do they want one suite, but they want two suites. Not only do they want two suites, they want them side by side, and they want them bigger. So we're trying to, we're trying to evaluate now, now how do we handle that? Because remember, our initial plan was 16 to 20 to 20 suites. So we're trying to, that's, that's also part of the process in terms of the design schematics as well. Because remember, we want to build, you, you want to build something that will last you at least longer than a year or two before you have to go in there and, and reconstruct it. So uh, Darren and, and Erica and, and others are trying to, will be reaching out to the public more and more to let them know that, hey, folks, if you do want your name on the inside or the outside of the building, if you're interested in a suite or a loge box or a premium sponsorship, let us know. Uh, because that'll that'll help us determine that. But but Councilor Rolfing, I don't have the perfect answer for you yet today, but it is something that we're going to have to come to grips with very very soon. Thank Councilor you. Erpenbach, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for being here to help us walk through this. Um, I wanted I'm looking at the uh, planning and zoning section of your presentation as well, and I'm um, interested in your comment that the goal is to find um, the public facility um, management company yes. um, by April or May of 2012. That will be a contract that the council will approve or disapprove. And yes. so my two-part question then, one, will you ask for council representation on the group that evaluates the RFPs? And then the second part of that is that early on in this process, we kind of had volunteers on sort of ad hoc committees that were helping with various things. Some of us became involved and others did not, depending on what the topic was. Will those sort of ad hoc committees continue? Will you continue to grab, you know, council input on those various topics? What's your thought process with that? Let me start with the first one. The first RFP that we've done uh, I, I would say no, and, 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 the only, and, and I'll explain that to you. The RFP is to find the firm that will help us identify the, um, uh, the winner potentially between right. Right. Um, I understand SMG and, and, and Global. At that point, I would strongly urge to, uh, us to have at least somebody from the council involved in, in, in that aspect of it, again, because the the mayor, we can't hire that person on, on our, or that group on our own. That certainly has to have the uh, the consent of, of the council. 
So yes, when I talked about eyes, ears, and work boots with the council, that is something too that we're going to continue to, to work on. Because I'm learning something new every, every day, Councilor Bach. I didn't understand soil borings un, until uh, uh, about a week ago. And, and so as I'm learning, we'll also try to evaluate what makes the most sense to have some of the, the women and the men of the council in, involved in this process too. Um, and, and again, as we uh, educate you more and more, you'll, you'll probably come to, to, to the leadership and say, hey, Mayor, uh, here's some of the things that we're intrigued by, and, and uh, do you think there's a fit for us? So I don't have an answer for you yet today. I'm not trying to skirt it, but we're, we're just still learning. Great. Thank Good you. Good job, though. Councilor Jamison. And, and thanks for your, your interest. Mayor, I need to clear the air on a topic. Sure. The Sky Force. Sure. I've had people ask me, and I need to ask you, did you or your staff know before the election that the Sky Force was not going to stay? No. The, however, I will let you know that in terms of the, the, the Sky Force being a tenant of the event center, right. uh, that was probably discussed maybe even before I became, I became mayor. Uh, and it was certainly discussed uh, during the time that we were working with the, the AECOM uh, report. Um, the business model, and I know we talked about that in this body, the, the business models for the storm, the stampede, the sky force, um, they're all different. Uh, and what may work for somebody may not work for, for others. Um, you know, for example, the, the stampede. Uh, they're certainly intrigued by the, the uh, potential to go into the new event center because of the sidelines, because of the, the fan experience, and, and so much more. But still, they're going to have to negotiate that with uh, the city, with this management firm, to make sure that it meets their, their business model. If we charge them $15,000 a, a hockey game, uh, the, I don't know if they're going to be able to go into the new event center. But, but that is more, there's more to come. Uh, uh, in terms of the, the Sky Force, uh, their interactions with, uh, with Sanford Health or, or whoever it was, that was between, that was between them. Um, my interactions with the Heinemans, were, were limited uh, except for one, one thing is that we tried to get, we tried to get their, their input on the design and schematics in a, in a meeting that we had with, uh, with Mark Cotter early on in the, in the, in the process. But, but I, I will let you know, Councillor Jameson, we should be doing backflips because of it. Um, uh, it. It's too bad we couldn't have done this a, a year ago. The, the Pentagon or the or, or that, that investment, oh my gosh, what an incredible thing to happen for, for our city. Uh, and it's, it's going to be a good thing to happen for the Sky Force, uh, at least, at least uh, they believe, and, and Sanford believes. But I think the real power comes into something that we've been talking about for about the last 13 months. It provides us an opportunity now to do something different, not only with the, the arena itself, but the flat floor space. We can have more events simultaneous events and larger events even before the new event center is built. So uh, I'm incredibly excited uh, about this and uh, I just wish it was built uh, tomorrow versus 2013. I just wanted to add a couple questions actually. The fact that the Sky Force actually is listed as a tenant for the Pentagon before it's even built or even the schematics are probably even drawn, is what drew my attention to the fact that we should probably be getting some tenants locked in to our building, and we're far th further down the path than they are. That's that nervousness that I have. Here's, a, here's another group that secured a tenant, and we've got the opportunity to do the same, and we haven't. But I understand some of your logic yeah. and Terry Torgelson's logic, too. My, my concern is, though, on selling the naming rights in the suites, yep. if you're alluding to the public that those teams are going to be, say the Stampede and the Storm are going to be playing in the new event center, and you're alluding to that while you're selling these things, and I think most of the public is hoping that they'll play there, yep. 
And I understand you can't have a lease and maybe it doesn't make sense, but somehow, some way, we've got to get a, you know, memorandum of understanding, some kind of a secure uh, statement that says those teams are interested in playing there, they want to play in there, and the terms of their lease are going to be such that the city is going to make it advantageous for them to play. I, th I think that would help sell the suites and the naming rights as well. Am I off base there? Not completely, but a little bit. Okay. Um, and, and let me stick back first by oh saying gosh. that this, the, uh, the Sky Force still are under, under contract with the, the Sioux Falls Arena. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as I know, they haven't signed a contract with the, the Pentagon. Um, again, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not part of Sanford Health, and I'm not part of the Pentagon, and I'm not part of Sky Force. So right now they are still under contract with, this, with the, uh, the Sioux Falls Arena. And our legal team, along with um, the administration and, and uh, with the help of, of the Sioux Falls Arena, will work through that, uh, that issue or indeed that, that opportunity. Um, now let me try to address your, your concern. Um, first of all, let me, let me support your, 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 your concern. One of the things that we've heard loud and clear is that uh, for the, from, from those businesses who want a suite, well, they want a suite and they don't want to, they don't want to be watching the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Sioux Empire farm show or the Sioux Empire home and garden show from their suite, to be fair, uh, Councillor Jamison. So even though one of the primary tenants of the new event center are those special events, those trade shows, those conferences, well, you're not going to get a lot of excitement if that's the only thing that you, that you offer um, those, those, uh, those businesses. Um, so yes, we're going to have to find some exciting things to offer those potential tenants. Um, some of those exciting things would be the, the stampede, would be the storm, would be a Bon Jovi concert, would be uh, a, a major rodeo and and so much more yes however Councillor Jameson I'm going to come back to something that we're learning and that is Ben as as anxious as you are to jump on this and start booking stuff we have been told time and time again don't do it don't do it slow down take a deep breath um, uh, because you don't want to you don't want to lock yourself into something that is going to provide you this much benefit when you could have received this much benefit if you just would have remained a bit patient. Uh, there's going to have to be some trust uh, amongst the people that are going to invest in the, uh, the, the new event center with naming rights, uh, premium sponsorships, suite, suites, and loge boxes. There is. Um, but, but that's just part of the fun and part of the business model that, that we're going to do is we're going to have to uh, run it like a business, and that is exactly what we're going to do. And, and, and um, I, I hope this isn't taken incorrectly, but we're not going to make some of, the, some of the mistakes that we've made in years past. I'm not going to do it. We're going to run it like a business. Um, we are involved in some contracts right now that, um, from a business perspective, should never have been done. No way. And we're paying for it today. I think uh, it's fair to say that contract you're referring to is the Sky Force with the arena. I think the other sports teams would really like to have that contract, and that's good. They were I not no going to continue that. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to comment that under your budget and financing, developing the internal system to track project cost, yes. I think that's a very good idea. The, the biggest problem you probably will have you know, is going to be the cost overruns. It's just likely to occur with a complicated project like this. It's just likely to occur. It's occurred on nearly every project that I can remember, just going back even to the library renovation. It just happens. Um, I just want to stress that it's likely to occur. Somehow we need to manage that process. And I know there's been a lot of promises about, you know, the 115, and, and the, uh, and the uh, construction manager at risk okay. project. But still even then, we'll get to a point, I'm sure, where we'll find ourselves saying, okay, 115 is okay, 
but 150 or 130 is going to be better. It just happens. It's going to happen. I mean, even the original arena cut off the corners because we were trying to trim the budget. So I don't know how to manage this any better, but all I know is that that's the biggest red flag, the biggest problem you're going to encounter in this enormous project. I know we certainly want to help you with that, but we also need to understand it's going to happen. And, and I applaud you for getting this into the plan and, and recognizing it, but I would also encourage you to de just go even further, to step further to know that it's going to happen. Try not to promise us that it won't because it's just likely to occur. And, and you know, do the best you can, of course, and hire the best people, but uh, I'm certainly prepared for it because it's just going to happen. But uh, So anything you can add to that part of the management, I would just encourage you to do. And Councilor Jameson, uh, I'm not going to go into any game already thinking that uh, I've lost one of the quarters. Never. Uh, right now, we've laid out a plan at $115 million. Uh, we're using a construction manager at risk approach. Uh, we've hired firms to help us manage that, uh, that uh, aspect of, of the project. So I'm not going to go into this thinking that we are going to uh, be, be over budget. Um, I'm a realist. I understand that there are certainly um, uh, risks and opportunities that, that happen uh, along uh, any, any building journey. But right now, I'm not willing to, uh, to, uh, to let that go. But thank you for the advice. And thank you for the encouragement. And I'm going to rely on Tracy Torback and, uh, and others on his team to help devise a, a process that's simple for you to understand so that you can truly evaluate where are we at. Uh, are we ahead of the game? Are we behind the game? What are the risks? What are the opportunities? Just like we did in business. Good job. Other questions? I just have one. Um, the RFP for Public Facility Consulting Services, has that ever been done by the city before, hiring that type of company? I'm going to defer to Mike Cooper. Yes. Mike, would you mind coming forward? Uh, I don't have that answer. Uh, Mike Cooper, Planning and Building Services. Yes, we have used a, a consultant in the past. Uh, we did that when we went through the convention center. Okay, and did they help then? put the contract together also yes, then? Yes, they helped us with the selection process as well as the management agreement. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anything else you'd like to say, Mayor? No, it's going to be a, a long journey. If we thought the, uh, the event center vote was a marathon, well, then this is a uh, ultra marathon because uh, it's at least a 33-month project. Uh, right now, we still believe uh, I talked with Mark Cotter before I came, and I said, Mark, do we still believe that first shovel is going to go in the ground in August? He said, yes. I said, Mark, do we still believe that we can have this thing built by the fall of 2014? He did say yes. But to Councillor Jameson's point, uh, uh, you know, we don't want to overpromise and then underdeliver, but our goal is truly to give you our best projections at, at the time that, that we can. So hang on for the ride, Sioux Falls. Thank you, City Council. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if there's no other business, we will adjourn this meeting, and the Public Services Committee meeting will start at 520. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>